there are still millions of people who think that voting isn't relevant to their lives. Or they think that voting won't make a difference. Or they think the system is rigged, so why bother? Or maybe they feel overwhelmed, you know, like the issues are too complicated and that politics is just too ugly. So they just don't want to get involved. Some folks are real busy, you know? They're like, hey, I got so much going on. I'm just trying to get my kids to daycare, trying to get to work, maybe get some sleep. They just feel like they don't have time for anything else in their lives. And, and trust me, I, I get it. I get being busy. And I definitely get feeling frustrated. Because believe me, I am frustrated too. I am sick of all the chaos and, and the nastiness of our politics. It's exhausting. And frankly, it's depressing. So I understand wanting to shut it all out and just go on and just try to live your life, take care of your family in peace. But here's the problem. While some folks are frustrated and tuned out and staying home on election day, trust me, other folks are showing up. Democracy continues with or without you. They're voting in every election from city council to governor to president because the folks who are voting know the impact that the leaders that they pick can have on every single part of our lives. You know, those sheriffs that we elect, they decide how our streets are policed. The school board members we vote on, they determine how our kids' schools are run. The mayors we, we send to city hall, they can fix those crumbling roads in the public transportation system or not. <laughs> the folks who represent us in Congress pass laws on everything from job creation to whether we go to war. And those are just the candidates on the ballot. This November, across America, there are also what are known as ballot initiatives on everything from supporting housing for veterans, whether we prom promote renewable energy, to improving facilities for our senior citizens. Those things are on the ballot. And the people who show up to the polls this November will decide what happens on every single one of those issues. So really, when you think about it, not voting is like letting your grandma pick your clothes out. <laughs> now, no offense to grandma. My mom is with me today. And we, and we love grandma. <laughs> I, I love when grandma comes to visit. I love spending time with it. I love eating her pie, eating her chicken. <laughs> but how many people here, especially those of you under 30, would let your grandma decide what you wear to the club? <laughs> how many of you would drive the car that grandma chose for you to drive? or live in an apartment with furniture that grandma picked out for you. All jokes aside, you know. <laughs> My point being, and I'm being funny, is that not many of you would want somebody who's not you, and doesn't live in the same space as you, doesn't see the world in the same way as you, even when they love you and you love them, you wouldn't let them do that for you. Because you know that grandma's choices for you are not the choices you'd make for yourself. What grandma thinks is good for you isn't necessarily what you think is good for you. With all the love in the world. And you certainly wouldn't go to some random stranger in the street somewhere, somebody who doesn't know anything about your life, someone who doesn't care about your community, doesn't understand it, doesn't know it, and ask that person to pick your doctor or whether, have that person figure out whether your daycare is safe or whether the water you're drinking is clean. You wouldn't expect somebody else to take care of your stuff. But when you don't vote, and that's the thing I, I don't understand, when you don't vote, that's exactly what you're doing. 
You're letting other people make some really key decisions about the life you're going to live, the place you're going to live, how it's going to work out for you. You're just saying, you do it. <laughs> and you may not like what they decide. You might not like living with the consequences of other people's choices. But that's what happens when you stay home. You're essentially putting your future in the hands of others. And the truth is, that's exactly what some folks are hoping that you'll do. You know, they're hoping that you'll just let them make these important decisions for you. Just sit back, let me figure this out for you. There are people out there right now who are making it harder to vote. But we have to kind of sit with that for a moment because you've got to ask yourselves in this democracy, why on earth would anybody, regardless of party, want to make it harder for people to participate in the democracy? But that's happening right now all over the place. They're closing down polling places. They're making it harder for volunteers to get people registered. They're finding all kinds of ways to keep you at home, hoping that when you hear about all those things, you'll just give up and just think that voting is just too hard, that it'll take hours of your time, that it requires some special skills and expertise that you, you don't have. That's what they want. And you can see how those kind of tactics can start make make people start feeling like this is just too hard for me. We all know someone who feels like that, again, regardless of party. We all know someone who thinks that way. An uncle, a neighbor, someone you grew up with. And that's why we're here today. Because we, we know that it's going to be up to folks like us who will come out on a Sunday for a rally like this to help to help those folks out, to help tell the truth about voting. And the truth is, is that registering to vote just isn't hard. It doesn't take long. It's, it's just a few minutes. And once you're registered in many states, including here in Nevada, you can vote by mail. <laughs> I, I do that all the time. I vote by mail in my house. In my, in, my, in my jeans, in my sneakers, comfortable, not rushed, not hunkered over. Fill out the table, the, the ballot at your kitchen table, and just drop it in the mail. And it works. It's just that easy. And voting in person can be just as fast. In fact, in 2016, the average length of time voters waited in line at a polling place was about 11 minutes. Just 11 minutes, and that's an average, right? Some, some places it was even shorter than that. Just think about, you spend 11 minutes on your phone, you know, watching videos on a given day. You spend 11 minutes choosing the Instagram filters to, to text your boo, right? So the thing we just have to tell ourselves, we have 11 minutes to do a lot of stuff. And if we have 11 minutes to do stuff that does nothing for our daily lives, then we've got 11 minutes to vote. And trust me, and, and here's something I just want to make sure people understand. Voting does not require any kind of special expertise. You know, you don't need to be, have some fancy degree to be qualified to vote. You don't have to read every news article to be qualified to vote. You know what you need to be qualified to vote? You need to be a citizen. You know? You need to be a part of this country. You need to have opinions about the issues in your community. That's what qualifies you to vote. Caring about your kid's future qualifies you to be a voter. Wanting a say in what happens in this country qualifies you to be a voter. So don't be intimidated. Don't let somebody intimidate you from being a part of this process. I've been voting since I was 18 years old. And trust me, I didn't know nothing about nothing at 18 years old, right? But what you do know is what you care about. For all the young people, you do know you have a voice. You do have opinions about what goes on. That qualifies you to vote. 
and it is not that hard. Plenty of folks of all ages are registering to vote for the very first time. And that should be a source of pride. You know? That should be as important as getting your driver's license, right? So those young people know that they want to have a say about what goes on in their neighborhoods. And they know it's time for a change. That's how folks all over this country are making change in their communities. Just give you an example. There's a little county in Missouri, Boone County. There, there were families struggling to get their children the mental health care they needed. Hundreds of families had been requesting counseling service for their kids, but the resources weren't there. So the folks in Boone County came together. They came up with a plan to fund children's mental health care. They gathered up signatures they needed to get their issue on the ballot, and then they got out and voted. And today, just a few years later, in Boone County, they're providing counseling for kids who need it. They're doing mental health screenings for every child in that county. And they're training teachers and child care advocates to better support kids with mental health challenges. And this all happened because folks in that one county, in one part of this nation, believed that their kids deserve better. And they knew that their vote was the way to make it happen. So don't let anybody tell you that that vote doesn't matter. Those folks in Boone County should, could have just sat back and said, oh my God, this is awful. Our kids aren't being treated well. What a shame. Everything feels so hopeless. So I'm just going to stay home. They could have done that. But they realized that it's actually the other way around, how our democracy works. They realize that the only way to make change in this country is to get out and vote for the change you're looking for. And when they showed up to vote, things happened. And the same thing can happen on every issue everywhere in this country. That's how change happens in America.